Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. It is violin bass time. Now, uh, I love these basses. Uh, anyone who's watched this channel for a while will know that uh, my, my personal uh, tastes and instruments tend to go for things that have a symmetrical body and uh, bits of chrome all over the place. I love a sunburst and I love a flame and here all of that is. <laughs> also, it's nice and light, which was the main reason why I bought it is because I am too old to be standing on stage with a fender that weighs nearly 5 kgs. I've got neck and shoulder problems and I'm just done with heavy instruments. I should preface this by saying that I have a very limited, in fact zero, experience with actual Hofners. Um, I've played a couple of the Ignition series ones and they were okay I suppose, but an actual German-made classic Hofner I have never held in my hands. Um, uh, this is the closest I'm probably going to get to that. Um, I have owned a couple of violin bases in the past. I had an Italian one from the 70s and I had a Chinese one from, uh, I don't know, 2007 or something like that. But they were both dreadful. This is the first one that I've had that is an actual professional grade instrument. But having said that, it's still got a few quirks. One of the main problems with the style of bass is the floating bridge. Now, they can't put a proper tunematic bridge in there by drilling into the body and putting proper posts in, because uh, they're fully hollow. They're completely hollow all the way across. So you are pretty much stuck with a floating bridge, which makes intonation difficult at the best of times, but then they give you this uh, horrible arrangement of fret wire wedged in a chunk of rosewood it's not great it's not even good this section here this top section here needs to be replaced i'm going to have to make a piece that has individual saddle adjustment on it so i can finally get the thing to be intonated with itself the uh, uh the foot part of the bridge is fine i suppose um, it needs sanding down to match the contour of the top uh, but that is a job for the next video. This week we're more dealing with things that are going on inside the body. Now, in just a moment I'm going to take this whole thing apart and actually drop a small camera in so we'll be able to see inside the body and we'll uh, take a look at how it's constructed and why it is the way it is. Uh, but uh, I just need to explain what's going on with the wiring. This thing's got phase issues. When both pots are all the way up, the amount of low end coming from each pickup uh, phases against each other and cancels itself out. You turn down one pot ever so slightly, the amount of bass coming from one of them drops sufficiently to stop the phasing problems and then you get more bass and more volume coming out of the output jack. Um, we're going to put a stop to that. I'm actually going to install a pickup blend knob there. That's going to become a master volume and then that'll be the master tone. So we'll get that sorted. The other thing, the other problem is that this thing, well, any acoustic instrument is going to have issues at high volume. It wants to feed back, but it can't because there's no sound hole, but you can tell there's a resonance, there's a weird acoustic kind of woolly, low-end roar that starts to happen on certain notes uh, uh, when I'm playing on stage. And uh, I can't be having that, it's no good at all. So, what we're going to do is a bit of an experiment, but I think it'll work. I'm going to fill the body with foam. But not just any foam. This is polyethylene foam. And I've actually got a few big chunks of it here, so we have plenty. Um, polyethylene foam is the safest choice for this, because it's a bit more rigid. Uh, I've got to squeeze quite hard there to do that, which means it will actually do a, a reasonable job of uh, dampening the inside of the of the base. Uh, it will not off gas while it's in there because there's no ventilation. If it was off gassing there would be gases building up inside there. There's nowhere for them to get out. They would start to corrode the electronics uh, and possibly even the glue joins. The entire base would just fall to bits within a couple of years. And this is very important. It forms a closed cell foam which means water cannot get into it. It's not a sponge. 
it's not going to soak up moisture as I'm sweating all over my base on on stage. It's uh, it's not going to wick into the body and become all well. It's not going to destroy it basically. Yes, it's an absolutely mad scheme. Yes, I have thought it through. Yes, this is happening. What's going to happen first, though, is that I'm going to uh, take this through to the studio and we're going to record a, a, a before test because it will be very, very interesting to hear what effect this actually has on the sound of the instrument. Okay, so immediately the first thing I notice is that it is a two-ply top. There is, uh, there is uh, the flame layer on top and there is another layer of what appears to be maple and I'm only guessing that because the inside layer of the back is, uh, is also maple and uh, then that'll have the flame layer for the back as well. Um, so uh, two-ply top and back, but check this out where the routing comes in for the corner of there they've taken a little nick out of the edge which means the edges of this instrument are fully an inch thick all the way around there's also a sound post in there so that's going to get in the way when we go to stuff it full of foam but first i want to actually uh, drop a small camera into the body and we can have a look at how it actually feels to go inside an epiphone viola bass okay Going in.
Right, let's fill it up with stuff. Um, I've got a plan in place in that I am going to measure the distance here. I'm going to cut the foam ever so slightly bigger than that so that we'll be putting a little bit of pressure uh, on the inside of the body. Now it's going to be, have to be cut to different heights because of course we've got uh, the arches uh, in the middle and then of course it comes in on the back. Is there a brace under there? No, there's no brace under there. Uh, there is just that, just that post. Uh, and yes, I think this should be relatively straightforward. And now it's time for the first sound test to see if that worked. Plugging into a tiny little guitar amp to run electromagnetic noise through uh, a bass. There's a centre detent there. Volume's up. Volume's up. Cool. All the way onto the neck pickup, hopefully. Yes. All the way onto the back pickup. Nice. And uh, hopefully, we, we, won't, we won't be able to tell the uh, what the bass response is uh, from this. But uh, yeah, that's going. Let's put it together and uh, see how she plays. Somebody asked me in an, another video what app I'm using here, and it's literally just the Boss Chromatic Tuner app. Uh, it's the, the yeah, it's it's a free download. Thank you, Boss. They're really really cool. Um, works great. 
doesn't cost $200. Very nice. And we'll be covering all of this in far greater detail next week when we actually make the new bridge piece. But uh, I have already cut little slots in these saddles because straight out of the factory, your strings slide around as you are playing. Your strings can move back and forth as you're playing. Uh, that's just not what anybody wants. <laughs> I don't know why they're shipping the, the space with this piece. And there's no easily available aftermarket replacement for it. Otherwise, everybody would go for the upgrade because nobody wants this. Um, so why they're still putting it on their bases, I do not know. Anyway, uh, basically, I mean, any experienced tech will be able to see the immediate problem here. I'm going to intonate the string. I'm going to intonate the string, and the middle two are just whatever they wind up being. There's no adjustment on there, and yeah. So this is a problem we will solve next week. Uh, I need to draw some detailed plans of exactly what I'm going to do. But for now, uh, let's just do the best with what we've got and uh, see how the foam sounds. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, it sort of worked, uh, I suppose. It's very difficult to tell from the sound clips. I've just listened back to them to compare them side by side, and you'd you'd never know from listening. But from a playing point of view, uh, it feels more controlled. That's noticeable. Uh, it feels like I'm. It feels more like I'm playing a solid body, but not completely like I'm playing a solid body. If you know what I mean. Basically, it feels like I've filled my violin bass with foam. Funnily enough, um, the tonal differences are probably most apparent because of the blend knob. Uh, that's just great now. I can go both pickups on full volume without having the volume drop. Uh, <laughs> that's great. That's a really, really good thing. It'll be interesting to see what happens at my next show when I'm at full gig volume, whether or not that uh, uh, resonant problem with the body is still there. Um, I am hoping fingers crossed that uh, that's gone uh, from what I've just played I would say it's probably pretty much eliminated so I'm very happy about that next week we will tackle the intonation issue because that is an issue um, I've intonated the G and the E the D wound up pretty much spot on but the A is miles away so I need to find a way to uh, make a little thing on there adjustable. Basically I'm going to have to make a tunematic bass bridge but not call it that because that's a trademark of Gibson and they'll sue me. So uh, come back for more legal proceedings next week. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing and I'll see you real soon. Cheers.